It's a chilly night in late November, and a woman sits in the middle of an emergency. I'm locked out of my place. Help is on the way, she's told. But as we're about to find out... Hey. Sorry to wait. There are no guarantees when you're picking a locksmith. It's not, it goes to a different size. The woman, in fact, is a marketplace producer. And this house is a testing ground that we've rigged up with hidden cameras. Okay, well, I think those all look pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Our plan is to call locksmiths over the next few nights. There we go. There, we know that one. Checkpoint door and lock. We've heard a lot about this one. From companies we've heard might not give us a fair shake. It says $15, 15 minute response time. John Seitz is with us. He's got 10 years experience as a locksmith and we've hired him to help with our test. And uh, I wanna show you, we've got some cameras set up. Let's go inside. Sounds good. Together, we'll be in a back room. If I just click here, we get a closer look. Lovely. Watching for signs of shoddy service and much more. Like what happens to Dorothy Sterling. He just couldn't get the lock to work. She's 94 and needed the antique lock on her front door fixed. And he kept trying and he just couldn't get it to work because he didn't know what to do. The locksmith is both inexperienced, she says, and threatening. He told me he was going to remove the lock and leave me with nothing. Now it's her carpenter, Titus, who's fixing the mess left behind. So as you can see here, he broke the door several places. Titus feels bad because he's the one who found the locksmith. So I called three different companies, and the one that responded to me first was Checkpoint. Online, Checkpoint promises safety, trust, and peace of mind. Customers, though, post reviews that use words like horrible, overpriced, and highway robbery. As you can see, this is the lock which they install. The Checkpoint locksmith can't fix Dorothy's old lock, and the new one he installs is poorly designed. Every time you You're turn this, your, yeah, your thumb that. would be knocking against this right here. To top it off, Dorothy says she is charged twice what she's quoted, and by the end of the ordeal, pays $1,500. It's not a, not a good experience for anybody, especially for a, a woman alone. Back at our test house, we're going to call Checkpoint. So that's the housing. But first, our expert John is helping plan our test with a brand new lock he's resetting. So you're replacing the pins with ones that would be easier to pick? Yes. He says just about anyone will be able to pick this lock, maybe even me. He gives me a few pointers. And then you're just going to get the pins to move up and down, just like the key would, one at a time. And in roughly three and a half minutes. Take it all out. Take it all out because it is picked. Uh-huh. And then just with a flathead screwdriver, you finish the turn. That's it. That's it. We're in. Is this a fair experiment, though? Yes. Uh, it's obviously been made easier. I would call it a, a good test for beginners. Uh, so anyone claiming to be a locksmith, they should be able to get through it. As day turns to night, we set our test in motion. Hi there. I hope you can help me. I'm locked out of my place. With a call to checkpoint. We can set a technician immediately. Uh, there will be a $15 service call. Okay. That's for a technician to go to your location. And to unlock the door, it will start at $35. It's one of the cheapest quotes we find. How much do you think it usually costs then? Like 15 plus 35? Yes, ma'am. It could uh, start at $50 total, okay. or it could be up to $100 depending on the difficulty. It's over an hour of waiting. And then... I think that might be him. Are you the locksmith? I am. Oh. Sorry, wait. Are you check your checkpoint? Checkpoint, yeah. OK. The one thing he makes clear quickly, there's no way to pick the lock. 
these type of LSD locks, they have to be drilled out. You can't actually pick them. They've got a staggered pin system, tall pin, short pin, tall pin, short pin, so that it's designed so you can't no. pick it. No. That's just how they work. Yeah. Not true, says our expert. Any locksmith seeing this lock should know it could easily be picked, but his only solution is to drill. Does that mean it's more expensive? Well, to like drill got... it, it's medium price, so it's not 350 the most expensive drilling. <gasps> oh, it's cheaper. Okay, because they said it was going to be like 35 Oh, well, plus. locks, to open locks, usually if it's like, like mailbox lock, desk drawer locks, yeah. they start at about $35, $40. Like a house deadbolt would be around, uh, this particular one is 250 to open it, to drill it open. Plus about $90 for a new lock. Our producer urges him again to try picking. You sure you can't just pick it? The LSD locks, you can't pick them. You can't pick this? No, they're five or six pin locks. I could be here for a year and not pick it. A year? That's what he said. He said it, that you couldn't pick this lock. Can you pick that lock? I picked it in three minutes and 30 seconds with your help there. Then I, I do remind you that I did not teach you very well. Before he breaks out the drill, we ask one more time. Okay, and you don't think we can pick it? That's the fourth time you've asked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll show okay. you what, what it's supposed to be like, just so you get a quick idea. Okay. He I'll spends the next two minutes or so trying, but with no luck. It's so much easier when you have a key. Thank you for trying. Locksmiths are supposed to ask for ID, proof we live here, right off the bat. But this checkpoint technician is well into destroying our lock by the time he finally asks. You turn the key this way, right? Yes. Yes. You do live here, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm right. renting it, yeah. You, you rent here? I rent it, uh, yeah. Does the landlord know you're locked up? Uh, I couldn't get a hold of her today. But it's okay, she'll be okay. Okay. Because yeah. otherwise it's... <laughs> He doesn't finish the thought, but does finish the job. You got it. Including a new lock. Our expert, nice. though, is not impressed. What are you thinking right now? That was everything I didn't want it to be. A bigger surprise awaits when it's time yes. to settle the bill. OK, so how uh, much? I'm totally so confused is as the price. You altogether 400 bucks. <gasps> no. With, yeah, with tax, 452.0. No. What? I, I mean, if I give you cash, can you do like 450? 400 credit? plus tax, 452. And with that, the call ends. Bye. Bye, have a good night. We contact Checkpoint. They admit their locksmith should have asked for ID, tried harder to pick the lock, and should have quoted a final price before starting the job. Checkpoint is now updating its procedures and agrees to compensate 94-year-old Dorothy. This is your industry. Yeah, this is the worst part of my industry. This is the worst part. I'm glad you're taking a good look at it. I have heard all about it, but that was sad. That was just really sad. You almost look like you're you're taking it personally. I this is this is my livelihood that I just watched someone make a, a joke out of. This is your marketplace. Oh, hey, is this um, locksmith experts? It's the second night of our test house, and we're on the phone with a company called Locksmith Experts. I've locked myself out of my um, house. I can't find my keys. The Better Business Bureau says locksmith experts has a pattern of complaints mostly about overcharging. As one reviewer puts it, these people are not experts, they are thieves. The company admits it has a few unhappy customers, but says most are satisfied. So basically we charge $29 to come on site. Yeah. And whatever needs to be done on top of that, yeah. Oh, how much, is, how much do you think that might be? It, it starts at 45 and up. We heard a similar quote last night from a different locksmith and it ends up costing $450. He said the lock was unpickable and insisted on destroying it to let us in. 
Our expert John is back with us. And once again, he's reset a brand new lock to make it easier to pick. Okay. This is night two. What are you expecting? I'm hoping for much better tonight. Just a straight call, honesty, an attempt to pick the lock. Oh, there we go. Car's pulling in. Hi, are you my locksmith? Hi. I'm OK. He says his name is Serge. And the very next thing he says is the proper thing. Do you have a piece of IT with you by any chance? Uh, I do. We show Serge ID and a rental agreement to prove we live here. And he immediately tries picking the lock. If it is possible to pick this lock, is it going to cost $95? OK. OK. Is that like on top of the? Yeah. OK. Like a service call sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. I'm not gonna charge you any five dollars for that. You're not? No, it's, it's, it took like two seconds. Oh wow! Yeah, Thank you. Can... You're smiling. Is that how it's supposed yeah, to be that's done? How, that's how it's supposed to be done. Unlike the many complaints we hear about locksmith experts, our experience with Surge is going well until it's time to pay. Okay, how much do, can I give you? It will be. Um, Hold on. Do you know how to leave a Google review? Uh, y yeah. If you leave us for a few, I can just do it for 80. Oh, wow. Okay. $80 and a Google review. Thank you. No Bye. Problem is, it's against Google guidelines to offer incentives for a review. And when we tell locksmith experts, they say it shouldn't have happened. It's against their policy. But there are other things about this company that are raising questions. Like for some reason, they show up when you call Port Credit Locksmith, or Brampton Locksmith, or Rouge Locksmith. So we couldn't open the door, and the next day we had a big gathering here in the garden. It's Birchmount Locksmith, when Tom Garrels calls them last summer. I looked on Google Maps uh, because I wanted to use somebody local that had a good reputation, and uh, looked at three different ones, found this one called Birchmount Locksmith, which you know seemed to be right up the street from ours. They quote Tom a price of $30 for the service call, $45 and up for the lock replacement. So what was your impression of this locksmith when they showed up? The $45 and up now went to $100 just to open the door, and on top of that, $185 to replace the lock. Tom fights back and gets a discount. But what he really doesn't like is the fact Birchmount Locksmith doesn't actually do the job. It turned out he was working for a company out of Concord called Locksmith Experts. Sure enough, the receipt says Locksmith Experts. So what happened to Birchmount? We invite Tom to go looking for answers just up the street. There's 5.30 there. OK, so it's on this side of the street then. Google Maps tells us Birchmount Locksmith should be right around here. What's the number again? 572. OK, so this is a building at 570. This should be 572. There's nothing here. It's just an empty lot. There's no locksmith here. Doesn't look like it. Nope. Why do you think they would pick this address? Well, I guess they just don't want to be found. Clearly, there's something scuzzy going on. We ask locksmith experts to explain. They say they act as a subcontractor for many companies and did not create any fake listings. Back at our test house, we want to know how far the fakery goes in the locksmith industry. OK, so that one there, this is right near where we are. So we try searching Google for a locksmith near me and find a company called Certified Locksmith Etobicoke. Right there. You see, uh, Certified Locksmith Etobicoke. So let's just pull it up. It's supposed to be right in the neighborhood. Oh, hey, um, I wonder if you can help me. I'm but when we call Certified and ask who exactly will be coming, things get confusing. What's the name of the locksmith that shows up? What company do you? It's FC Locksmith. It's FC Locksmith. FC Locksmith claims to be one of the best locksmith companies in Toronto and seems to have branches in Ottawa and Calgary. 
So why is FC coming up as certified on Google Maps? We decide that instead of a locksmith coming to us, we'll go to the locksmith. Okay, so we're gonna go to certified locksmith Etobicoke. It says it's six certified minutes away. Locksmith Etobicoke may be closed by the time you arrive. Our GPS leads the way towards certified, or maybe FC locksmith. And in minutes, there it is, 2975 Bloor Street West. It's right there. It's right there. And that does not look like a locksmith it's company. It does not look like a locksmith company. No. But it says right here, it says 2975 Bloor Street West. Certified locksmith Etobicoke. Parama is there, which looks like a, it's a credit, union. credit union, yeah. The deception we discover doesn't end here. We find more than 20 fake locksmith locations around Toronto, saying they are linked to FC Locksmith which makes us wonder about all these five-star reviews we see on FC's Google business listing. When we dig deeper, we figure out most of them are fakes too. Dalton Fincher is actually American astronaut Clayton Anderson, seen here on the space shuttle Discovery. And Denver Cothran is actually Ian Rowland, a lawyer who happens to work just next door to us. So we head over to see if Ian Rowland knows his image is being used to promote FC Locksmith. So this is the company here. You can see there's 57 reviews. And if I scroll down, there you are. That's your picture, right? Denver. <laughs> your name's Denver. Denver. Interesting. Okay, I got locked out of my car the other day. They responded right away and solved the problem. The technician that came was a real lifesaver. I, I have no idea what that's about. I certainly didn't get locked out of my car. Was that's that not you. That's not me. No, it is not me. It's just, well, the picture's me, nothing else is. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea how they got it. There are a lot of fake reviews on yeah. this site. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm a lawyer. It's appropriation of my image. I may have to pursue it. Thank you for that information. You're welcome. I, a one-star review we managed to find on FC's Google listing comes with a twist of irony. A man named Colin tells people to not use this company. He says the locksmith mangled, scratched, and dinged his door. In response, FC calls it a fake review and says it's just one of our competitors. But we track down Colin, who doesn't want to come on camera, and both he and his review are real. FC denies allegations of fake reviews or locations. It says all those positive reviews could have been posted by anyone, and they're checking with their marketing company about any fake locations. This is your marketplace. We're mapping out deception in the locksmith industry. So you're at your house, you're locked out. Yeah. You want something that's nearby. You that's call something that looks 10 minutes away, like 10 minutes away tops. A local locksmith. A local locksmith. And what you actually get is a grocery store, not the locksmith company that you have called. Each of these red dots represents a supposed locksmith company in the Toronto area. But after months of digging, we discover none of them are real locksmith locations. Here's what they really are. Drug stores and retail stores, parking lots and gas stations, strip malls and banks. It makes us wonder how much can you really trust Google Maps searches? Mike Blumenthal is a search engine consultant. He helps businesses get exposure through local Google searches in locksmiths, in appliance repair, in moving and garage door opening, any home service business, you see a massive amount of fake listings at the present. What's the harm in that? Well, the harm is several fold. One is legitimate businesses can't compete. The other is it's very deceptive to the consumer. A lot of times these businesses that are willing to cheat on their listings are also willing to cheat on their reviews, willing to cheat on who they send out to repair. They could be sending people into your home that are not either qualified to be there or shouldn't be there because of 
background issues. But doesn't Google have rules against fake listings? They have a lot of rules against fake listings, but they don't enforce the rules. We tell Google and the locksmith companies about all the fake listings we've uncovered, and now all of them have been taken down. Google says because of our investigation, they're auditing all locksmith listings across Canada. But Mike says it will take more than investigations like ours to solve the bigger problem. It's gone beyond trusting Google as a business to fix these issues. After watching this for 11 years, the only solution is a political one. There needs to be rules at the regulatory level with serious consequences, financial and perhaps even criminal consequences to both the businesses that create fake listings and deceive people, as well as to Google. It's the only way, he says, we'll ever truly close the door on deception.